Eid Mubarak, Stephanie. Yeah. Eid Mubarak. I know. It is Eid. It's Happy Eid. For those who don't know what Eid is, it is a Muslim holiday with uh, twice a year. It's the new moon. Um, something about you guys who know more. Something about there is like during this time, it's like the holy month and there's no such thing as sin in the month. Um, what do you mean there's no such thing as sin they that's how like someone was explaining to me like it's like a month where there's like you don't sin oh yeah like there's no evil right it's like the belief right and then on the new moon it's like a fresh start or something and then um they celebrate and host a lot of people and the really cool thing about it is that everybody is very welcoming into their homes they're making a lot of sweets and different stuff like that um, and our community is the majority of Indo-Fijian people are Muslim. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. I had one of the ways oh, one of my uncles explained it to me who is Muslim. Is that like um, the Prophet Muhammad said that I could be wrong on this. So take this with a grain of salt. But my understanding was that like um, they, like Muhammad said 12 months or 11 months of the year, like, you know, or live for yourself and whatever but one month of the year should be set aside for me for allah oh yeah and so that's why it's a holy month like i mean not that those other 11 months are totally like selfish but like one is like one month is a holy month i see okay actually that makes me that makes more sense to me and eid marks the ending of yeah the holy month of fasting so where yeah a lot of people in our community don't eat from sun up to sundown and so, and they don't take, that's the craziest part is like food is, uh, is not a big deal. Like it's not hard to, cause they can eat right before sunrise and they eat right after sunset. Yeah. So that's not a big deal. But the crazy thing is like no water, especially in a place like Fiji or I guess in any, like yeah. in a lot of countries where there's lots of Islamic, you know, people, a big pop Islamic population is like the no water part. I'm like, Ooh, yeah, that's, that's intense. That's crazy. Yeah. That's really intense. Yeah, and I think, like, it's a, it's interesting, like, our um, coffee shop that we opened in Sanganga, we've tried to make sure that all of the different people in our community are welcome into our store. So we've made sure that all of our products um, that need to be halal are halal. Um, all meat products. And for those yeah. who don't know what that is, it just means that there's been a prayer over the meat and that it's, like, safe for them to eat. Yeah. Clean. Um and then we try to make sure that we have, I think, like three days a week, we have um, vegetarians in our community. So we try to make sure that we have vegetarian options available, things like that. So yeah. A lot of the Hindu population on Monday, Tuesdays, and Fridays are vegetarian. Yeah. So we're just yeah. doing our best to make sure our space is welcoming for more than... Um, but ham and pineapple is not halal, Stephanie. Yeah. I saw that comment. I kind of laughed. We put up a video with um, like our landlords who are such sweet, beautiful people. They're Muslim. Um, and they were coming into the store, did a video for us for advertising. Mm-hmm. Just we wanted to let our community know that that's what we're doing. And someone said, oh, but you're serving ham and pineapple. And I was like, no, no, no it's just chicken for the meat. Yeah. There's no ham and pineapple. We um, don't have ham and pineapple option. Yeah, we know there is that no beef that's not And there okay. is no pork in our facility. Yeah, we won't bring yeah. it into the store. Yeah. We've decided that that's something we won't bring in because we want... This is fresh tea and coffee, by the way. Yeah, we want people to be welcome in and feel comfortable with their dietary stuff. Fresh tea and coffee now serves pizza. Yeah. So it's been it? killing it. Actually, it's been, yeah. It's been doing good. Like, it's it's uh, like I mean, okay, we're, we're people who, you know, created content before we had the businesses so that when we had businesses and stuff that we could have an audience to be able to like tell people about you know what we're doing and we continue to t- to tell our story it's kind of like started from the bottom and see where we go yeah. right um but it's it's funny because some people are like you know so we do read the comments i guess is what i'm getting at or we see them every once in a while um and one of the comments was uh was talking about how like people you know, it's so expensive, like six dollar slice of pizza. Which, when you when you think about it, it does sound really expensive, but that's because everything that 
or the things that go on pizza here are a bit more expensive than other places where cheese is made. Yeah. Or, you know, where these things are actually produced, like flour and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, all everything, of it is imported. Yeah, everything is imported. Um, and so it was like, man, that's like one hour of work for like a slice of pizza for people. And I'm, they're like, you know, I heard some people say like, well, that's like, you can't run a business off of something that's like for special occasions. And I'm like, that's every restaurant almost like people don't eat out all the time like it's always people are always going out for some sort of special occasion like you know yeah there are some people who eat out all the time but like overseas like french italian you know lots of fast food restaurants like i mean you don't go out every day and you only go on special occasions but they have a business that runs off of it like there's enough people in the community that if everybody comes and spends money on a special occasion or like they're once a week that they decide to spend money on eating lunch out you can run a business off that yeah like well and also like if you look at the normal everyday food that's in other shops it's actually more expensive it's like eight to nine dollars for curry and whatever stir fry people normally eat or yeah. chicken and chips so i would say actually the pizza is a cheaper option where we are and i'm hoping um, you know, we want to make it affordable as we move through Fiji and we open up more of these stores. We'll, we're going to do that eventually that we just make it something that's accessible to people. Cause to us, pizza's not fancy. It's finger food. Yeah. Yeah. Finger food, meaning that if it can be eaten with your hands without cutlery, it's just like, it's not, it's not like a high class kind of food. Yeah. yeah. It's not fine dining everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I feel so bad right now. Why? just feel weak oh, we got it, fish poisoning the fish poisoning you yeah have? <laughs> so we just should we start with i have fish poisoning i'll tell you guys more about that yeah and our content manager is watching us and has fish poisoning and if he falls asleep and uh, passes out over here we don't judge him i've given him some a lack of energy it might be high as a kite over there so <laughs> go fly away little bird <laughs> so what was your last two weeks like because we didn't podcast last week yeah, it's been yeah. a little crazy, so I think maybe we should address a fish poisoning. So everybody's not like, "What's going?" No, on? no, we'll, we'll leave it till the end because that 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 is kind of like what just happened. Oh. We'll tell everybody about the. But we went on a holiday. That was fun. Yeah, John and I took a couple of days off. What uh, three days? We went over to a friend's. Um, their kid had a birthday party, and we stayed at their house. That was great. Mm-hmm. Um, new friends and and their kids are awesome. They connect with our boys, so that's really nice. And then we rented a house for two days just to take a break because we've been both working a lot. Um, and I feel really burnt out. I feel tired. I just needed like a couple of days to breathe and sleep and do nothing. Mm. I was even like kiboshing like John was talking to me about work. Like, don't talk to me about work. Mm. I, and that's not normally me. Normally, it's John telling me to shut up and stop talking about work. True. I was like, please, I just I don't want to think about it. I don't want to. Yeah, I just actually need a moment. But the funny thing is, I had like a couple days of rest and I woke up in the morning. And you know how like sometimes when you sleep on your pillow wrong, your neck oh, yeah, sore? Right. And then like when we came home, by the end of that day, I couldn't move my neck and I was in agony. And I had to, I think four o'clock, I laid in bed and I told John, I'm not doing anything for the rest of the night. Kids are yours. I'm in so much pain. I can't even move my neck. And finally, like today... Like, it feels quite a bit better. I didn't take any painkillers or anything. I can, like, back up the truck. It doesn't feel great, but it's not as bad as it was. So I think, really, like, when you're working so hard, you're kind of just, like, thriving off adrenaline. And then when your body takes, like, a moment to just rest and actually just relax, sometimes life catches up with you. Yeah. So. It was nice to get away with the family. Yeah, it was nice to spend some time with the boys and, Yeah. I think that's uh, what else happened. Uh, well, actually, before that, if we roll back the clock a little bit, uh, your grandma. Oh, yeah. Even before that. Yeah. My grandma had a stroke. And that was kind of sudden. We were uh, actually, we were right here sitting where we are right now. And she was like sitting in that chair. And uh, our content manager, Tui, was sitting here. And I was having a shower. And she was reading like, she was looking through one of Seva's coloring books and then all of a sudden she like dropped the book and like was drooling and there like couldn't move and so luckily i had the vehicle here everything was yeah was ready and so i just threw some clothes on and 
we just sent it into town, into the clinic, full speed with the boys. And then, uh, yeah, we were in the hospital. She got checked up. And then after a couple hours, we got sent to Lombasa in an ambulance, which is the nearest city. And then, yeah, that was even, that was the fastest I've ever got to Lombasa. Because there's a couple 60 zones, like 60 kilometer an hour zones on the way there. And he was doing 120 the whole way. And so even through the 60 zone. So that's really? like double. Yeah. And it, well, it was Dude, middle. It was like fast. one in the morning, though. So it was so there's no traffic. And so I think we made it to Lombasa in like 20, 22 minutes, something like that. That yeah, was pretty good. Yeah, it was really, really fast. And Quite. she's doing pretty good. Like uh, yeah. even in the clinic, she seemed to be recovering. Mm-hmm. See that her like, um, you know, when you get a stroke, a lot of times half your face limps and you can't use it. So I think by the end... She was talking again and, you know, more control. Yeah, before we even went to the hospital. Yeah, so that's a big deal, but she's but, at high risk. Yeah, we still went to the hospital and she was admitted for two or three days because, yeah, she, her blood pressure is a little bit high. And uh, she, on her ECG scan, which like measures, I think, like the strength of your your heart pumping and like the how regular the beat is, it was a bit irregular and it wasn't very strong. So she got put on a couple new meds and she's she's out of the hospital now and recovering. But yeah, that was a bit that was scary. Yeah, yeah. and I think like this happens a lot. I mean, we've even had um some other things happen in this last week with people with medication. Um there's something with your grandma. She's not on the medication she was supposed to be. Um didn't want to be. And I think, like, sometimes with medication, we had someone else this week. They didn't want to be on the medication they're supposed to be. So now they're more sick than they should be. And there's this, like, weird, like, um, concept of, like, Western or, like, medical medicine is is dangerous or could do more harm. Mm. Um, and I always wonder, like, where that comes from. Like, I wonder if that comes from, like, a deep-rooted fear of, like, you always hear people around the village or the area, like, when their kids are being bad and they're, like, well, if you're bad, I'm going to take you to the doctor. I think for sure that's probably you an the majority injection. of it. It's like a mm-hmm. little bit of like deep-rooted fear. But then also, like, I think people, like, bad news travels fast. And so in a small country, bad news, bad news travels just as fast as it does everywhere else. But chances are you know the people. So it's a lot more personal. So when there's like a bad thing that happened with a doctor, it's like, oh, yeah, that was my auntie. Or that's my distant relative. And so you feel like you know the people that all these bad things happen to. Whereas yeah. like you hear horror stories all the time in different countries, but you don't know the people. So it's the, you don't like connect with it, right? Well, but you also go around and you hear that parents say like, hey, you want to go to the doctor? If you don't listen, I'll take you to the doctor. You're going to get a needle. You want a needle? Uh-huh. Hey, if you don't listen, you're going to go get a needle. Well, it's and like, I think that the majority of the time, like I always hear, oh, the Fiji medical system is brutal. And I don't fully agree. Like, I think a lot of times the situations that people put the doctors in there are brutal because they wait till they're almost on death's door and then they go to the hospital. Or last week they could have taken their medication, but they were scared to. So now they're about to die and they go in for a cure. And it's so much harder to fix you on death's door than it was last week when you were, you know, just had some sort of infection and Mm. they could have treated you just with some antibiotics or something and i don't know i think sometimes like that's pretty hard to beat like that like um i don't know thing that is instilled from like childhood and not that western medicine is everything i just think it's it has its place it has its use and you know if you go into the doctor's office well then like take the advice or, or just maybe don't go i don't know what do yeah. you think <laughs> I, don't know. I, don't see. I don't know it depends it depends on what state you're in and it depends on the care that you're getting too. Yeah. The and I think it's always there. good to question your doctors, be knowledgeable, use Google, you know, check with someone that might have some more medical. So ask lots of questions, do. understand what's going on. Yeah. Like you need to be informed. And I think in any country in Canada, I need to be informed. Like our, our um, doctor in Canada, the reason I liked him is not that because he was a great doctor. Actually, sometimes I thought it was kind of brutal, but he would actually just send us to a specialist every time. Oh, yeah, right. 
Yeah. Like, if there's actually something wrong, I was like every specialist ever. Oh, yeah. If you have your infection, I think you should see the specialist. Mm. I just felt like he just passed us off every time. Yeah. Like, good and bad, but you always got, like, good care because you got to see the top person. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. It's just, like, there's no, no system is perfect. We right? were camping this week. So, we got back from our holidays. Um, yeah, and then we brought some folks from Canada, friends of friends. They were staying in Tobisabu, and they came to, uh, well... I have a friend in Canada and he wanted us to just give him, like show him a good time and show them something outside of the resort. And so we, uh, we met up with him in Sabu and then we came here, took him for a swim in the river. I think they enjoyed it. Okay. Wait, that was fun. I don't know what you're talking about. You said we went camping this week and then you skipped. I said before night. that, before oh. that, uh, cause I was like, Oh, we went camping. I was like, Oh no, actually on the way home from Sabu, we did, yeah. We met up with those people and we brought them back to the village, remember? Yeah, that's right. Oh, and the worst thing happened. So we were <laughs> down at the river. Oh, my god! our kids obviously are like slightly feral. But like... What does that even mean? They mean like they're like wild cats. Mm. You know, you can't quite tame them. They're great. But like they got to just do what they got to do. Yeah. But we're down at the river. Like destroy each other. Like showing these people like... Oh, this is a village. This is beautiful river. See our children swinging. Like, look how wonderful things are. And then all of a sudden, like, he grabs the rope while Seven Eye is on it. And Seven didn't have enough, a good enough grip. So he slips. And then he, like, have you ever watched, like, Tarzan when the apes are attacking him? And he, like, crashes through the jungle and just, like, hits, like, tree branch after tree branch. And you're like, no, actually, I haven't. I'm pretty that's sure. That's what that's like, though. That's what happened to Seven Eye. Yeah. He got destroyed by the tree roots. And then he was just hanging on one of the oh, roots, like just laying. I was like, like there, and I had like this moment where I was like, did he just die? Like, oh my gosh. And then I was just like full angry at Eliki, and it wasn't his fault. Um, uh, then, it was definitely his fault. No, it wasn't. He didn't mean to. It w- yeah. Yeah. And then I was also just like, are you okay? And then I... I grabbed Seven and I was like checking him out and obviously he's like slightly traumatized. He recovered really quickly and went, got back on the swing. Yeah. And I was like, I think those th- folks were like, <laughs> <laughs> you should see their faces. They're like, oh my gosh, like this is insane. And but then like, was, as soon as he stopped crying, I was like, hey buddy, come, let's go back on the swing. Okay. He's like, okay, okay. And, and he was just like, like totally fine. And I was like, all right, champ, go and on. And like their faces when he got back on the swing, they're like, what is going on right you now? You know what? Honestly, I think Aliki was more traumatized than Seven Eye because I was angry with him. Yeah, and you then, lost it. Well, I didn't lose it. I just told him, get down and like get out of the room. Oh, yeah. Like appropriately so. You were like, what are you doing? Yeah, because he was being silly and grabbed the rope. Yeah. And he was just trying to do what the older kids do. But yeah, but the older kids don't grab the rope. The older kids, like, wrap, you know, wrap their arm around his chest to get him. Yeah, they it. grab the child. Yeah. So it was a little different. And I just wanted him out of the river in case Seven Eyes' legs were broken or something. And we had yeah. to go. I was just like, okay, what's the emergency exit? <laughs> and I think those people were like, what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> yeah, like, they came into the village. So and funny. we did the Sebu Sebu with them. And I think they're like, oh, this is nice. This is really unique and cool. And then it was like walking down to the river. That was, that was, I think they were like, oh, okay, this is intense. Well, it's pretty steep. And like, we do have like cut out stairs, but it's slippery and muddy. And I'm going to say white people's feet are like skinny skis. Like we have shoes on all the time and my feet are like that so i can say that like they're just like slender and so when you're going in the mud if you guys ever ice skated it's like going down on ice you're like "Ah," and you're gonna die and um i have pulled my back i'll say that so i need to like my feet and i feel bad i feel bad for them because like it took it took a while to get down (laughs) to the river and my feet, I'm going to say, like, I've lived here three years. They've definitely gotten wider. Yeah. Like, if you look at a lot of Fijians' feet, they're, like, really wide and, like, strategically so, like, they could actually, like, get, like, over, like, the mud and, like, get up a riverbank. And me on just struggle bus, like, slippery feet. And John's always like, what are you doing? And he's like, spread your toes. I'm like, my toes don't spread like that. Like, they stay together. My feet are meant for high heels. And we took them on the raft. Flip-flops, then- dude. Seva got destroyed. I think it was just an eye-opening couple hours for them. 
yeah. they left they left i think they were they were happy it was a kind of experience <laughs> to be honest with you where like when somebody walks away you're like okay they either love that or they hated it yeah it's one or the other i don't know but that's just where we live you guys want to see i'm gonna go fiji? with it's, like, it's the most memorable experience they have in fiji you're welcome <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know we'll, we'll see. see i don't know then so then the next day we went shopping did a bunch of stuff in Lombasa and got ready for camp and because we want to start ripping some some trees for our house and so yeah so we me and Tui and another guy from Moturiki his name is Koroi and so he came he's the chainsaw expert and so we all loaded up the tractor and drove up the mountain and then unloaded it and and walked all our stuff down to a farmhouse that one of my my great uncles has in the back country and we camped there for it was only two nights, eh? Huh? Yeah. 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 It wasn't that long. And so got some content and cut down some trees and slabbed up some wood to get ready to build the house. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. We're but that's where we got the fish poisoning. Oh, Okay. And so, yeah, I got given a fish that was... We'll leave him unnamed. Yeah, yeah. But I got given a fish and... Uh, Tui's a little bitter and he'd like if we would just no, blast no, no. this person but we're friends with them. Yeah. Tui has fish poisoning. He's not feeling good. So he's like, no, heck yeah, no. Yeah, so uh, we were like out <laughs> in the bush and then my uncle, one of my uncles was coming out every day by horseback. And so I, I, uh, I got him to come by the house and tell Steph to pull that fish out of the freezer yeah and so he brought the fish to us for like oh you're the bush that they were like yeah yeah yes fish for lunch Woo, boiled fish so he he like helped you know he was helping us in the morning and then by 10 o'clock he said okay i'm gonna go start cooking so he cooked a big pot of cassava and then we had ginger there onion salt and this fish and we came back Woo, this is fresh fish and we smacked it there's a big fish too finished the whole thing four guys then the afternoon these guys started feeling weak and then and then my uncle had to climb back up the hill out of the valley to come back to his horse and he said up on his way up the hill he rested four times (laughs) he couldn't uh, he had to rest four times on his way up the hill and like usually like you don't have to rest at all and so then that night yeah tui and koroi started feeling like pain and then i woke up this morning i was like oh my gosh i feel so sore and i didn't know if it's just because we were sleeping on the wood like because there's a farmhouse there but there's no mattress or anything so we're just sleeping on the wooden floor and i'm like oh i feel like trash so i like went down to the stream and did like 20 push-ups 20 squats just to kind of get my <laughs> I like how it's john's solution i feel terrible i must exercise <laughs> well like just get the blood flowing right because usually like even when you're sore you don't feel like going for a run go for a run like like one kilometer in you feel pretty good I've never had that experience in my whole life, <laughs> so I'll agree to disagree. When I, when I feel sore in the morning and then I go running, the whole time I've got some profanity coming out my mouth. Okay. So. And so, <laughs> so, yeah, and then I, I had to climb up the mountain out of the valley to get to service because we have Wealthy Creator class, the, the education course that we're taking. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that was like, I'm definitely sore. And then I woke Tui up before I came up and he's like, yeah, okay. And then he barely made up the mountain like 10 minutes later. He got up. He's like resting on his on his knees. He's like, oh boy. He's like, my legs are painting. And then we went to back down after the after the class. And Croy's legs were also painting in the same place. And then when we got hey, back, wait, let's be honest. Croy is like a beast. Oh, he is a beast. Yeah. So if he's in pain. Oh yeah. You're like. He's oh. the definition of like yeah, just pure strength. Wait, what did he carry down the mountain? Oh, he carried yeah the whole rib cage of a bull, like both sides. That's insane. It was like what? like it's like a couple hundred pounds like on a stick all that pressure on your shoulders is like crazy and so yeah so then when we got back home we were like and then Kuroi f- figured he's like oh no, this is fish poisoning like you we both feel the same like him and Tui felt the same kind of pain and I was feeling weak and so we're like okay instead of working today like we were supposed to put in a day of work and we're like no let's just pack up and load everything back up the mountain to the tractor and go home then we got home and we're, my uncle was supposed to show up on horseback again this morning. And he never showed up. And then we came <laughs> here and he found out that he had been diarrhea all night and <laughs> was like sick. And so like we're still like so out of it. But we're bringing you guys this content. And that's why we decided to do a podcast tonight. Because yeah. 
You guys had fish poisoning today, so there was no better day to do it. I know, I know. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Put in the time. What a day. Yeah. What a day. I think we should just play the game. Because the computer battery's about to die. Oh, that's true. I forgot the computer charger. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Let's just go for it. What's the best gift I've given you? Material and immaterial. Ooh, and Oh, okay. So best gift you ever gave me is John gave me these like knee high red velvet boots oh. and I only wore them like once a year or ever, like twice a year just to preserve them so they could last forever. I still have them. They're in Canada in storage. Mm. I love them. And w- he bought them for me when we were dating and I was like, how did you know? I love this. So that was the best actual gift because that was like... All your other gifts are good, but they're practical. They're like a rain jacket or like something that I could use that's like too practical. <laughs> Where like the boots were just like a joy gift. And yeah, like, guys, like girls also like gifts that like aren't practical. So they don't have to be gifts that they no, actually No, no, girls just like gifts that are practical. Nobody wants right. a vacuum. Not that you've ever given You said girls one. just like gifts that are practical? Oh, I meant girls like impractical gifts. Yeah. We want diamonds. We want boots. We want flowers and I chocolates. bought her. I've bought her sponges. I bought sponges. her brooms. <laughs> you I would brought, die. I've, I would absolutely slap you in the face if you bought I me bought a sponge. I bought her rakes. I've tried to. I'll be so mad. I've tried to, you know, lots of useful gifts. You know, try to make her useful, but. Yeah. Okay. The immaterial gift that you gave me that was the best was. Um, after Sevenaya was born, I think, yeah, uh, like a month after he was born, you sent me to like this hotel spa oh, for yeah. a night by myself, and that was the best thing ever. Wow. Like I just spent like the night by myself, like sleeping through the night, no babies, no nothing, and I got to go to the spa all day. I would say that was a little lonely, but it was still relaxing, and I just like came back and it was like. It was great. I mm. just felt so good. And it was very thoughtful and um, well-timed. So I thought those those two things were my... Mm. It's your boy. It's your boy. <laughs> okay, best gift that you ever gave me. Uh, I'm like going to say this. Okay. And you're going to be like, no, that's not. I'm going to be like, I'll tell you what... I think the best gift you ever gave me <laughs> was the clock. I love that clock. Oh, that was a good gift. Yeah. She gave me this clock that was like a gear. And the, it was just really, really unique because I was, I was a mechanic. And so it was just like a bunch of gears spinning. It was a clock that went up on your wall. And so it was just really, really cool. It was really, really intricate. And it yeah. looked like just like a bunch of like random truck gears and whatever going all in different directions. And it just like spun interestingly. It looked like a pinion gear out of a, out of a, out of a rear diff. It's kind of what it looked like. Yeah. I, don't, a bunch I, of like, I just remember seeing it and being like, oh, that's so John. Yeah. So I remember that was cool. That I think the best immaterial gift you give me is just your love. Oh <laughs> my gosh. I feel like that's such a cop out. Anyway. Shalee. Okay. Moving on. Yeah, like you're welcome. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you're well you're welcome, honey. Every day. You're welcome. Um, before what what did you learn in uh your devos this week? I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really read my Bible this week. You're unbelievable. I will say the thing that I've been talking about biblically a lot this week. But what did you learn this week? I don't really have anything. Hmm. Some weeks you don't. Let's be honest. Right. I think but that, that means you can do better next week. All right. right. I promise. Right. I think the thing I've been talking a lot, lot this week is just like, um, what does the love of Jesus mean? And like, what does forgiveness mean? And like with sickness is why we've been talking. There's been a lot of people sick and like people are saying to me like, oh, well, like I got sick and like it's because I sinned. And for me, I keep saying, if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, that covers the past, the present and the future. So how can you be sick because you sin because you're already forgiven for that? Right. And we're all like the moment we're born, we're all on our way to death, unfortunately. And death means that you have to become sick in some way or your body fails you and then you die. So sickness is not a result of your personal sin. Sickness is the result of the world being sinful. Yeah. And that like if you have Jesus in your heart, it's not 
some people say like, oh, you have an evil spirit or you have this. And I'm like, no, no, if your soul and your heart is already filled with Jesus, nothing else can fill it. So don't worry about that. Like you're already forgiven. You have Jesus in your heart. That's kind of what we've been talking. I've been talking to a lot of people about this week. Um, no, I just feel like it's important to know, like, if you love Jesus, you are forgiven for now, for the past, the future, the present. Well, you don't right. have to worry about it. Hmm. Like, uh, we always go over, like, I always add on to that. Like, my mom always explained the Bible to me. Like, this is not, the Bible is not a book of rules. The Bible is actually a guideline for your life saying, this is how God created life. This is how you live your best life. You'll live your best life if you don't lie, you don't cheat, you don't murder, you don't do all these things because there's consequences with sin. And, you know, reality is if you murder someone... But it's still sin. It's still sin, yeah. but you're already forgiven for it. So you get punished by the consequences on earth. But you're already forgiven. You get punished by the consequences on so earth. So, like, let's say, mean? like, you have sex out of marriage, okay? Oh, I see That's saying. a sin. You have the consequence of possibly you'll be impregnated. You'll have to deal with having a baby... That is a blessing. But and also a sharing that intimacy with somebody. Yeah, you'll yeah, have yeah, a long-term yeah. intimacy with someone that m possibly will not be your husband. Right. Or, you know, like all of these things have punishment. If you murder someone, you may go to jail, or you'll live with, like, the feeling of that guilt for the rest of your life. There are consequences for your actions, but if you love Jesus, you are, and you ask Him to forgive you. You are forgiven for your sins. Right. It does, but if you act in a certain way, Jesus is saying your life will not be as like beautiful as it could be. This is how I will bless you with amazing, beautiful, more successful life. You will have, you will thrive more if you live like this. But right. you are already forgiven. That's all. Right. How about you? Um. Yeah, I just meant I've. I've just been hearing lots of talk about like end times recently. Like everybody's like really? obsessing about. Yeah, yeah. Like just not maybe people are obsessing. It. Maybe I've just heard a lot about it lately. And I just always like wonder like, okay, like if this is true, if it is the end <laughs> times, like what is the, and, I'll, and I'll, I ask you listening to this, like what, what is the, re what is, what is the repercussions of like living in the end times? If people, if like, people are so convinced that like this is the lead we're in the last days it's like so what does that mean for you in your life because like you don't actually know when jesus is coming back or whatever and i think just um so i was reading in uh in second peter and it's like yeah peter's like you know he's i think in this situation he was a prisoner under roman emperor nero and so he's like writing another letter and he kind of finishes it off with like talking about what, you know, how we're supposed to live because everybody then thought we were in the last times, like in second Peter and people thought that like, Oh, Jesus said he's coming back, but he's not coming back. So they were getting like slack because they thought they were in the last days, but they weren't, they actually, they weren't. Yeah. And so they were like, Oh, he's, he's not coming. So they started like doing a bunch of random stuff that was sinful. And it's like, so so Peter addresses that and he's like, just so you guys know, like for God, like one day is a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. Yeah. That's where he talks about that. And, um, and then he says something really, really interesting. He says like his patient, his patience means salvation. So like basically him not coming back is just giving everybody a chance to repent. Mm. And so to live your life, um, in a way that like gives hope to other people around you. And to make sure that like, you know, people talk about energy and positivity and all this stuff. But like, we're actually supposed to live in a way that like people question like our Your hope. Faith. Yeah. Like, yeah. why, well, why, what's, what's with that person? Why do they live that way? Why do they live with such freedom? And I think that like end times or beginning times, or if it's one day or a thousand years left, like, I don't really think it changes the way that I act um no. or the things that i do i think maybe i mean i think we all need to live with a bit more urgency 100 percent um but yeah beginning times end times middle times live with hope and know that uh, that his patience means that you get to have salvation yeah no, i think like end times i never live like end times i'm like 
I have no idea. And it talks about Jesus coming like a thief in the night. I'm expecting him to surprise me if it happens. So. Yeah, I mean, there's for sure signs. There's definitely signs that it talks about in Revelation and stuff like that. Yeah, but, but. I think I don't concentrate on that. And I see lots of people actually close to death doing things that are um, morally really questionable. And I always look at them like, huh, interesting how like you're living the end days of your life in like this questionable like moral state because if i knew i was close to dying i would definitely try to live um like really i don't know like so i don't have to like confess well to whether Jesus. you're close to dying or whether you're not you don't know you might not wake up tomorrow morning you might get no hit. but that's what i'm saying like i would you know i think every day we need to just live the way that we should live and close to death or not yeah I think we need to do that. I think Guys, our, we got no mosquito coil on here, and I'm getting destroyed. And by our mosquitoes. battery's gonna die, the so I think we gotta wrap up. Computer. We yeah. love you guys. We'll talk Have to you guys night. next week. Okay. Peace. Bye.